I was going to throw this bowl out, but it's in perfect condition. There's no chips or anything. I, I don't know what came in here, but what I'm going to do is turn it upside down and let paint run down this. I'm going to put candy in it when it's done and give it as a gift to someone else. But first I have to wipe the outside off with alcohol because right now I'm getting it full of my finger oils. So I'll show you how I do that. I'll get set up. And, and another thing I had to think ahead after I've got, I'm not going to set it down on the surface and pour paint on it because it's going to get funky where the edge sits in the paint that runs off. So I need something tall to get a hold of this after the paint stops dripping. And I'm going to use a bottle of magnesium and put it on there, let the paint run off, and then take it and I can move it. It's not tippy or wobbly. This cap fits just perfect inside here in this ring in here. So that's what we're going to do. And then on top of this, we're going to let the paint run off onto another project. And that is a vinyl record album. So here I've got this from the 60s. I probably will never listen to this again. It's been up in the attic for 20 years already. <laughs> so you know I'm not going to use it. I, I don't know if it's worth anything. At this point, I really don't care. And this is a commission piece that I'm making for my nephew, who is going to actually make a clock when I'm done. I do his painting, and then he takes the piece that I've painted and makes clocks and picture frames. So that's what we're going to do today, and I am going to get set up, and I'll be right back. It's squeaking. Squeaking is a sign of clean glass. So I'm going to get all the alcohol off. The rest will evaporate. I'm going to cover it with shellac when I'm done, just as a preservative so the paint don't scratch off too easy. And I really don't know how long that it's going to last, but... If it starts falling apart, she can throw it out. All right, let me get set up here. Adjust the height of my camera to accommodate the box I'm going to be pouring in. And I'll be right back. He's going to be using the hole in the vinyl for the clock cuts. I'm going to put a little piece of tape over it. And I think I better wash this with alcohol, too. And I wanted to show you something else. This is one of the paint skins that I peeled off from an old project. And it kind of looks planet, planet-like. And we're still debating. I might have to trim the edges, but we're debating if this should be attached after this record is painted. This is going to be a different contrast. And they were wondering if we should put other small planets on here. So that's still in the thinking department. We're not sure. But I am going to... It doesn't matter if I scratch the record or not anymore. It will now become a piece of art. So I'm going to put a little alcohol... This is just straight isopropyl rubbing alcohol, 91%. And just to get the dirt off, fingerprints, anything that would be in the way for the paint sticking. The record was in pretty good condition, but it's something I'll never use. It would probably wind up going to Goodwill and be someone else's project 
with all the modern Christmas music and the internet. Uh, I think vinyl. Oh, I see something else on there. Vinyl is with the DJs making their own music. It's being repurposed for that. Actually, I heard that they're starting to make vinyl records again. I like the sense of nostalgia with vinyl records. To think that I had a whole collection of them, hundreds of them, when I was younger, and now it's all digital. Thousands of songs on a little tiny piece of computer technology. I love it. Okay, we're looking pretty good. I don't see anything else. Got to have the light shine on it to see. Okay. Here we go. This is my paint box. This is an old drawer lined with plastic. I'm not going to use silicone or coconut oil for this bowl because I don't want the cells and using Floetrol I might have cells anyways. So I'll set that in the middle here and make sure I'm even that I'm not going to have a lot of runoff yet. I'd rather it just uh, the paint just sit Looks like I'm going to have to bring that end up a little bit. And I want to show you another tip for leveling your projects. I have clothespins that are taken apart. They're taken off the spring. And they are perfect for a wedge because you've got different heights. They go up on an angle and they get thicker and they work awesome. So you can use them and get different heights and I can't find mine right now. So I'm just going to take a few popsicle sticks and craft sticks. Oh, I think I see it in my other cup over there. But I'll show you that in another video sometime. Just going to bring this end up over here. And this end here on my side. I think one more. You can put a small level on here to see if you're level. But what I normally do, just wait until there's paint on the canvas. And then I can tell which way it's going to run, how much I need to stop it. So I don't really normally level until I've got paint, but if it's something that I can see with my eyes, I, I try and get it right away. All right, I'm gonna start dropping paint. Let me see if I need to adjust. I think I need to adjust my camera a little bit or slide it closer, closer. There we go. Alrighty, I've got everything adjusted. Last time I did a video, I showed you about these little food storage cups. You can take and shake them. They don't leak. They're awesome. So I have a whole bunch of colors here. We're going to go with a lot of blues, greens, purples, a little bit of pinks and red. Maybe some yellow. Not sure. We'll see as we're going along. This is a color I just mixed this morning. Need to check. Oh yeah, that's right. This one was a thick one. That's why I made pouring medium because I ran out. And I think this is just a little too thick for pouring. Yeah, it is. We'll put this one aside for later. Get a different color. Sorry about that.
a lot better. Well, folks, here goes. I never did this. Never poured over a glass item onto another item. So this is a first an experiment. The woman that I'm making this gift for loves blue. One of her favorite colors. All right. So that's dark blue. Waiting for something to happen. All right, it's looking good. So now we're gonna use some purple. I'm gonna go with a lighter purple first. It's just covering up the color I put on previously. But the runoff is looking awesome. All right, let's go with some more purple. Actually, this is kind of a wine color. I mix all my own colors. Maybe I'm just pouring too much on. There, it's completely covered. Hmm. All the way around. Well, this didn't work out too good, did it? Not the way I planned. Well, let's see what we can do about this. What can we do about this problem? Take and comb it. Maybe it all ran off. Hmm. No, it's under there. It is under there. I suppose it'll show up as the paint drips off. Ah, there's some blue. Told you it's under there. Hey, this bowl. It's kind of awesome for dripping. Look at what's going on on the record. It's like I'm getting some kind of flower pattern. Kind of like that. Let's just drip now. Just drip a little bit here and there. Try that. Maybe I should have put some silicone or coconut oil. The coconut oil has dimethicone in it. So maybe I should have used some of that in there. And after the base coat's on, maybe there would be cells. Should we try that? Let's try that. Let's get another cup. Put some of this wine color. Let's get the coconut oil. Show you what this is. It's coconut milk hair serum. The anti-breakage serum. And it's got a chemical in it called dimethicone. Let's do it right there. Excuse my dirty fingernails. I've got paint under my nails. See that? There, it's in focus. This has got dimethicone, and that's what makes cells. So let's see what that does. I'm just going to put a couple drops in. Not much of a stir, just maybe three times. Let's pour this on and see what happens. Remember, this is all an experiment. I don't know if I'm going to get cells on here. That's what we're going to find out. Put another color right in there. Just 
squirt at the mouth of the comb. A little tiny stir. Put a little blue in with it. See, sometimes maybe you just got to change the method that you're going about things. The dark blue. A little more light blue. Looks like I'm going to have enough paint on that record. That's for sure. Okay. Here's some more. Mixed colors. Candy in a dish is always kind of a nice present. It's kind of neat looking. I think I like it. Really made a difference. Okay. That's it. I'm done with that. I'm just going to let it drip a little bit. And it looks like... I might be too high on this side, so I'm going to very carefully slip out one of those popsicle sticks, and the paint wants to run over to the other side. I'll watch. I'll watch and see what it does. I'm just going to let this drip off a little bit, and then I'm going to move the bowl and work on the record. I went and found a plastic lid, so I'm going to let the bowl finish dripping off in the plastic so I can peel the skins off later. Now, this is going to be the tricky part, and I might even drop the bowl because I have, I have some coordination problems. Sometimes they're really bad, and I make a mess. And this could turn into one of my blunders. So let's see how bad this is going to be. I had a little bit of suction from the jar. All right. I made it. I made it without dropping it. Hey, that's good. Because I got a case of the dropsies. Very bad sometimes. So now we have all this paint on that record. It looks kind of neat. It's kind of neat. Kind of looks like a flower shape, doesn't it? Now I could take a skewer and go in right here to the center and actually really turn this into a flower. It's not supposed to be a flower, but it's supposed to be something else. Oh, look at that blue in there. I like that. I really like this. Let's tilt it, see what we get for a design. Tilt it around. I'm concentrating, so if I don't talk for a little bit, you know I'm concentrating. Thinking and concentrating on what to do with this. I have a lot of options. I'm not seeing any cells. Now, some of the colors do have the coconut milk in it. So we should start seeing something happening for cells. Because normally when you agitate your paint with uh, coconut milk or the uh, 
silicone, you know, start agitating your paint, it creates the cells. I'm starting to see a few of them come up. I like this dark blue spot. I would like to keep that. I'd like to get rid of some of the red. So I think what I'm going to do is find my little pour cup over here. Just pour some more paint on top of it. Add some more coconut milk. I think I might add some green. Let's see. Maybe a little, just a smidgen of light orange. I call this color pumpkin. Just a little bit. It might even get lost, but I don't want that to overpower anything, so just a little bit. And I'm going to go with some pink. I love these food storage containers. And then I have teal. This is a greener teal. Looks more green on the camera than it does for real. And let's see what else could I put. We've got purple. My cup is full and I put way too much paint in here. I won't need all of the paint, but I have it just in case I want to change things. Another dash of coconut milk and to give it two stirs and that is it. Now I'm going to pour and see what we get. That's interesting. Kind of full to be able to do a flip. So if I just pour some out here and there, I'll empty some out and then maybe I can do a flip. And you can see what that's like. All right. Paint might go flying, but here goes. <laughs> now what I'm going to do is poke a hole in the bottom of that cup. Because I, I need to break the vacuum in there. So I need to find something to stab it with. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I got my shank. Alright, that should break the vacuum. Sometimes I rub the inside of the cup with silicone so all the paint comes out nice. I still feel a vacuum. It's like a suction. There we go. It let go. Now it'll walk by itself. Isn't that neat? Right, let's go destroy these other planet-like things I made. And let's go like that. Wow. Wow, that's pretty. Pretty much came out. This cup is shot. Gotta make sure that goes in the garbage. So I don't accidentally put paint in it. Mm, I see some cells coming. Let's tilt. I'm gonna go all the way to the edge. Maybe get rid of that other paint that I put on here. Oh, this is kind of neat. I think I want to change the structure first before I go any further. Bring these together. 
make it look like it was natural. All right, let's try that. Okay, I reach these, take the tray, it's a little easier. I might leave some of this kind of rainbow effect here on the edge. This is pretty. I think he's going to love that. Look at the nice cells that are coming in. They're multicolor. When I flipped the cup, it uh, agitated the paint. Look at that cell. It's got a pink edge, blue in the middle. I hope that this stays because it's looking nice. I think this is something he'll like. See what I meant by a smidgen of light orange? I can see it coming in and it would have probably really dominated this. And that I didn't want. I wanted more of the blues, celestial colors kind of. Because we might put that planet on here. That one skin that I have. I'm not sure yet. Get rid of that stuff on that edge. And then come back just a little bit. This is looking pretty cool. Now let's try and get some of that darker blue down here. Oh, I've got a cell. See that dark blue coming in on that cell? The light's in the way. Got a couple of them. I want to see more of a dark blue. This is really pretty. I like it. And it didn't turn out to be a blunder. <laughs> Could have been. Big time. Okay, get rid of some of this green down here in this area. It's just like a big blotch of green. I don't care for that. Now see, you do too much and you wreck it. At this point, I should probably just walk away, right? Uh-huh. Been down this road before. Just walk away. Let's get the comb. Maybe we can make a few tendrils coming out. It's pretty thick. That's interesting. Okay. Let's go off this way. So I want it to look natural. If you try and do too much to be perfect, it just you just wind up doing too much and wrecking it. This paint's kind of thick. I think that looks better. Let's get some of this paint off. Look at that purple. At this point, I really like it. I think that my nephew will love this piece for his his next creation and what he plans to do. I'm going to leave it at that point when you like what you see, you put it down, leave it alone and walk away. Just make sure that it's level so that what you got stays. And I've also noticed another thing I said I wasn't going to torch this because, I don't know, I'm seeing a problem torching with this pouring medium. It uh, fractures the surface and I've noticed that 
dropping brings the cells up. Watch, watch the cells appear. This does the same thing as torching and it gets rid of the bubbles. See how many came in through here? That's agitating the paint. Here, some more came in here. The, the little yellows. Watch. Study it real good. Watch. I think this is better than torching. Yep. It agitates the paint. It brings it up from the bottom with the bubbles. And we see a lot more color come through from the bottom. And I think I've pounced it enough. You're starting to get a lot of effect through here with cells. Just tilt it a little bit. I want to be able to see how much paint is actually left on here. That when you tilt it, is it going fast to run off? And if we, you know, seem like it's slowed down, then I think we're good to just leave it set. So right now what I can do by tilting it is actually stretching the cells. So we're going to pounce it one more time and then I'm done. That's it. Oh, it looks like more came up through here like little stars in that dark blue area. I think I'm going to do a piece with dark blue and pink. And try and get the webbing part from the coconut oil in there. So that's it. I will show you this piece when it's dry. Give you a close-up of it right now. Show you what I got. Pretty neat, huh? This is going to be a clock. This is a piece that I've commissioned. See that dark blue and purple? I love that right there. Oh my goodness, I've got to do another piece. See, it's addicting. We've got an addiction going on here. But when you can make so many things and they go up for sale and you're selling them, it really makes a person feel awesome that somebody is actually buying their art. It's good therapy. Very good. I think I'm going to just leave the camera right there for a moment. And when I um, turn my video off here, I'm going to snap a picture of that. The problem with this it's just really hard to leave it alone. It is. But we don't want to play with it too much because we can wreck it too. And then you wind up with a piece that says, oh, why did I do that? Because we were trying to be perfectionists. But this big plot here, I just didn't like it that much. So I thought that maybe I could just add a few tendrils here and see if I can change the way it looks. Still like it. That's the thing. <laughs> you just still like it. I like the top part of it, the way the colors blended there. I don't know, it kind of looks like some kind of fish or something, so we're going to take care of that. Sometimes you see faces in the paint, and uh, sometimes you see things you don't want to see. I was watching some guy, I'm not going to say who it is, but I was watching some guy pour paint. He's new, and uh when he was done, he showed his piece, and oh my god, the paint created a guy sitting on a toilet. Yeah, yeah. I didn't say anything, 
I thought, no, some things are just better left said. So I didn't say anything about that. I think I'm going to, you know, I just, this spot here bothered me right from the get-go. I wonder. You know I'm going to wreck it, right? Just lightly on the top of the surface of paint. And try and blend these two together so it looks natural and that's what we want we want it to look natural it was a natural occurring incident that the paint did something itself Can't monkey with that spot too much. Maybe just take some. That ain't gonna work either. Okay, I kind of got rid of that spot I didn't like. Totally changed it. There we go. Let me just try and slide a little green down here. I could always go and dig some of the paint off of the droppings too. Okay, that's it. We're done. Leave it alone. Walk away before I wind up scraping it off and starting over. And I couldn't resist. There was so much paint left in that box. So I took a kid's shovel, scooped up a whole bunch, and one across the album cover. Can't let that good paper go to waste. I did an abstract on with a negative space. Now the white is the negative space. After I had this scooped on to the album cover, I just went with a squirt bottle of white paint and threw some on there. And what happened was the color faded into the white paint, which made some really neat effects on there. So that's the end of my painting experiments today. Take care, y'all. Live in peace and harmony.